Roller coasters are machines that use gravity and inertia to send a train of cars along a winding track. The combination of gravity and inertia, along with g-forces and centripetal acceleration, give riders constantly changing forces which create certain sensations as the coaster travels up, down, and around the track. The energy of the roller coaster system is conserved throughout the ride, meaning that the potential energy at the top of the first hill is converted to kinetic energy as the train descends, and vice versa as the train climbs up the next hill. The initial hill, or the lift hill, is the highest in the entire ride. As the train is pulled to the top, it gains potential energy, which is calculated by multiplying the mass of the train, the acceleration due to gravity, and the height above the ground. The higher the train goes, the more potential energy it has. This potential energy will then be converted to kinetic energy as the train rolls down the hill. Kinetic energy is calculated by multiplying half of the mass of the train and the square of its velocity. The faster the train goes, the more kinetic energy it has. This means that at the bottom of the hill, where the train has its highest speed, it also has its highest kinetic energy and lowest potential energy. As an example, let's look at Kingda Ka, a roller coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. It has a lift hill of 139 meters high, which gives it a potential energy of about 136 megajoules, assuming a mass of 10 tons. As it drops down at a 90 degree angle, it reaches a speed of 206 kilometers per hour, which gives it a kinetic energy of about 106 megajoules. The difference in energy is lost to friction and air resistance. A force is a push or a pull that acts on an object. There are several forces that act on a roller coaster car and its passengers as they move along the track. One of these forces is weight, which is the force of gravity pulling them downward. Another force is normal force, which is the force exerted by the track on them perpendicular to their contact surface. These two forces are usually equal and opposite when the car is on a flat or curved surface, but they can vary when the car goes over hills or loops. The net force is. The net force is the sum of all the forces acting on the car and its passengers. The net force determines the acceleration of the car, which is the rate of change of its velocity. According to Newton's second law of motion, the net force is equal to the mass of the car and its passengers multiplied by their acceleration. The greater the net force, the greater the acceleration, and vice versa. The direction of the net force also determines the direction of the acceleration. For example, when the car goes down a hill, the net force is downward, which causes the car to accelerate downward. When the car goes up a hill, the net force is upward, which causes the car to decelerate or slow down. One way to measure the net force acting on a roller coaster car and its passengers is by using g-force, which is the ratio of the net force to the weight of an object. A g-force of 1 means that the net force is equal to the weight of an object, which is what we feel when we are standing still on Earth. A g-force of 0 means that there is no net force acting on an object, which is what we feel when we are in free fall or weightless. A g-force greater than 1 means that the net force is greater than the weight of an object, which is what we feel when we are pushed or pulled by something. A g-force less than 1 means that the net force is less than the weight of an object, which is what we feel when we are lifted or thrown by something. Different parts of a roller coaster track can produce different g-forces on a car and its passengers. For example, when the car goes over a hill, it experiences a negative g-force, which means that it feels lighter than normal. This is because the normal force from the track is less than the weight of the car and its passengers, which creates a net force upward. This makes them feel like they are floating or flying in their seats. When the car goes through a loop, it experiences a positive g-force, which means that it feels heavier than normal. This is because the normal force from the track is greater than the weight of the car and its passengers, which creates a net force downward. This makes them feel like they are pressed or squashed in their seats. Another type of force that acts on a roller coaster car and its passengers is centripetal force, which is the force that keeps an object moving in a circular path. Centripetal force acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of an object and points toward the center of curvature of its path. Centripetal force does not change the speed of an object, but only its direction. 
For example, when a car goes around a curve or a loop, it experiences a centripetal force that keeps it from flying off tangentially. The centripetal force can be provided by different sources, such as friction, tension, or normal force. The amount of centripetal force required for an object to move in a circular path depends on three factors, its mass, its speed, and its radius of curvature. The equation for centripetal force is Fc equals mv2 slash r Where Fc is the centripetal force, m is the mass of the object, v is its speed, and r is its radius of curvature. This equation shows that the centripetal force increases with the mass and the speed of the object, and decreases with the radius of curvature. This means that a heavier or faster car will need more centripetal force to stay on the track, and a tighter or smaller curve will require more centripetal force as well. The centripetal force can also affect the sensations of riders. When a car goes around a curve or a loop, the riders feel a force pushing them outward from the center of curvature. This is not a real force, but an apparent or inertial force caused by their inertia resisting the change in direction. This apparent force is called centrifugal force, which is equal and opposite to the centripetal force. The centrifugal force can make riders feel like they are being thrown or swung out of their seats. In this video, we have learned about the physics of roller coasters such as how energy is conserved and transformed, how forces act on a car and its passengers, and how centripetal force keeps them on a circular path. We have also seen how these physics concepts create different sensations for riders, such as feeling lighter or heavier, floating or flying, or being pressed or squashed. Some examples of roller coasters that illustrate these concepts are Formula Rosa at Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi, which has the highest speed of 240 km per hour, Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point in Ohio, which has the steepest drop of 90 degrees, the Smiler at Alton Towers in England, which has the most inversions of 14, and Ijanaika at Fuji-Q Highland in Japan, which has the most degrees of rotation of 1260. What are some other roller coasters that you know or have ridden that have interesting physics features? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos on Chronicles of the Curious.